I know what most of you are thinking. You're thinking he hasn't had his hair cut yet and you would be right and you would be wrong. Welcome back to Ari Books and Nightclubs. You would be right about my hair in the sense that at the time of filming this video, my hair has indeed not been cut, but by the time you watch it, it will have been. This video is being filmed one week before it gets uploaded because when it does get uploaded, I'm going to be abroad. I received a message this morning telling me that I'm going to be working abroad next week. Now while I'm there, I may be sans internet. Now that would mean that I wouldn't be able to upload an Ari Books and Nightclubs video and you guys would miss out. And you guys need your fix of Ari Books and Nightclubs. Therefore, I have decided to film next week's video a week early, but of course in my videos, I usually talk about all the stupid and silly stuff that's happened in my week, but that week hasn't happened yet. So what to talk about? Those of you who watched last week's video will know that I am currently in Aberdeen, and this is actually the house that I grew up in, so I thought this was a perfect opportunity to do the throwback tag. Question one, what year were you born in? The year of my birth shall remain a closely guarded secret. All I shall tell you is that I was born between the years of 1986 and 1988. You'll have to work out the rest for yourself. Question two, do you have any pictures of yourself from when you were younger? If so, show them. I have showed both of these pictures previously, but they are a joy, so I'm gonna be sharing them again. So I'm gonna be sharing them again. Sharing them again. Sharing them again. Here's a picture of me in a golden dressing gown with my friend Natalie, circa 2000. And here's a picture of me circa 2003, trying to look cool and sophisticated and failing. Number three, which TV shows did you grow up watching? <laughs> Mr. Ben. Mr. Ben is not to be confused with Uncle Ben's, the maker of delicious sauces. For those of you unfamiliar with the cartoon, Mr. Ben was a man who discovered a fancy dress shop and he could go into that fancy dress shop and put on an outfit and whatever outfit he put on, he would go into a world that corresponds with that outfit. For example, he dresses up in a suit of armour, so he goes back in time to slay dragons, so he dresses up as an astronaut and he goes into space and all those sorts of things. It was amazing! The other cartoon I used to watch a lot as a kid was the Moomins. Now, I think I liked the Moomins because I was kind of on the brink of being scared by them. There's nothing scary about the Moomins at all, but I think I watched them when I was quite little and I was like, what are these creatures? What's a moomin? Number four, what did you want to be when you grew up and do you still want to do that? When I was a child, I wanted to be an actor. I still want to be an actor and I still am an actor, which is very nice. However, I almost wasn't an actor. There were two things I wanted to do when I was little and the other one was be a lawyer. Now I was always kind of dueling with that idea and then when I kind of got to the age where I was leaving school and deciding what to do, I kind of made the decision that I wanted to go and do that. And then I told my singing teacher and she was not happy. We did a deal. She said that I had to audition for one drama school and if I got into that drama school, I should really seriously consider going. And I agreed to that. I auditioned for only the one drama school that I wanted to go to. I auditioned for it and I got in and true to my word, I really thought about it and I decided to do it. So if I hadn't been for that little pep talk, things could be quite different. Number five, show a video of you when you were younger. The video I'm about to show you is going to demonstrate two things. One, the skill I was convinced was going to get me into the circus, and two, my childhood temper. Cue the clip. The little boy that I'm shouting at in that video is my little brother. He's not little anymore. Number six. What were your favorite toys to play with? I absolutely loved this dude while I was growing up. This guy is G.I. Joe, and I took him everywhere with me. Now what I love about this guy is not only is he a trained soldier, but he's also a trained dancer from fame. I should also point out that I also had a Barbie doll who I decided to call Gary. Number seven, what's the most embarrassing thing you can remember doing? The most embarrassing thing that I can remember doing was in July 1999 when I entered a singing competition on a holiday park. I decided to sing I'll Be There For You from Friends by the Rembrandts. I didn't have a backing track, so I decided to sing a cappella, which is fine, but in the middle of that song, there is a guitar solo. Now I could have missed the guitar solo out. I could have stopped the song before we got that far. But no, I decided to sing the guitar solo. And boy, Cheeboppers, do we have a treat for you. Roll the clip. I think the 
worst thing about that clip is the fact that I get to the point before the guitar solo and people start clapping because it's like it's over and that would actually be a brilliant place to stop but instead I sag it in and you could audibly hear people laughing. Number 8. Name three songs you love to listen to as a child. The first song I ever learned the words to was Everything I Do, I Do It For You by Brian Adams. I used to sing that all the time when I was little. I also love the hamster dance, which for those of you who don't know it goes like this. And the cartoons Witch Doctor, which goes like this. Number 9. Tell a funny story of something you remember doing when you were a child. When I was in primary school, I occasionally came home for lunch. Now, whenever I did come home for lunch, I always watched Sesame Street. Now, in this particular episode of Sesame Street, there was a child in a plane drawing the land below them, and I thought that was really cool, so I wanted to give that a go. However, surprisingly, I didn't have instant access to a plane, so I had to settle for lying on the ground and drawing what was above me, which is not what happened in that episode at all. This was in December, it was snowing outside, and I got a cold. Brilliant. Number 10. Are there any special things you've kept from when you were a child? Yes, I do. These. These are my Pokemon cards. As you can see, some very early PC art there. What I love is my brother has scored out my name and written his own to claim him as his own, which is not cool. I have kept these because I can't bear to throw them away because I spent all my pocket money on collecting them to begin with. And there's still that thing in my head where I'm convinced they're going to be worth something. Now, obviously, there are a few Pokemon cards which are valuable, but I basically just have like 50 Charmanders. Number 11. What was something weird you used to do when you were a child? In a previous video, I've showed you that I can do this. Now basically somebody told me if you could do this you were an alien, I took that literally, so I convinced myself that I was an alien and used to look at the sky waiting for aliens to come pick me up. True story. Number 12. What's the scariest thing you can remember happening to you when you were younger? Without a doubt it is Return to Oz. For any of you who haven't seen Return to Oz, it is an amazing film. It's the sequel to The Wizard of Oz. Dorothy goes back to Oz, but everything's all really messed up now. The yellow brick road's gone, all the emeralds have been stolen from the Emerald City, it's been completely overrun by these things called wheelers. Now, the head of the wheelers, who controls the wheelers, is this woman called Princess Mombi, who's absolutely terrifying. Princess Mombi steals people's heads. She's got all these heads in these different glass cabinets, and she tries to steal Dorothy's. Dorothy tries to sneak out one night before she does this. She accidentally wakes up one of the heads, and it goes, Dorothy girl! It was pretty much the most terrifying thing I could imagine. I was so terrified of that section that I made my mum actually unwheel the tape in front of me to make sure that it literally didn't exist anymore. And then 10 years later, I bought it on DVD and loved it. Number 13, how is the world different now to how it was when you were a child? I think the world that children are growing up in today is completely different from the one that I grew up in. When I was a child, if you wanted to speak to your friend, you had to physically go out into the street to speak to them. Whereas now you can speak to them through computer games and stuff like that. Music is a big one. Gary C talked about this in a video last week. He was speaking about how when we were kids, music was an event, like a new CD would come out and then you would go down to the shop to buy that, whereas nowadays because of music streaming services, you don't have that anymore. However, because of the internet, there's all sorts of experiences and things you can go through as a child that we couldn't have as a kid. So it's not better or worse now or better or worse then, it's just different. I'd love to know your answers to that last question. How is the world that children are growing up in today different from the world that we grew up in when we were children? As always, for your ramblings, comments and musings in the syllabub. This week's book recommendation is Moab is My Wash Pot by Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry is quite rightly one of the most beloved people in this country. He is multi-talented, he's skilled across all sorts of different areas, he's an amazing man and this book is his autobiography from the first few years of his life. It's a fascinating read to find out about what happened in his youth and how he became the man that he is today. It's funny, it's honest, it's worth reading, please give it a go. That's almost everything for this week. I have a new enemy! This week's new enemy is saying goodbye to my parents. Saying goodbye to my parents has one major plus point and one major minus point. The minus point being that I have to say goodbye to my parents, which is never very nice, but the major plus point is, whenever I'm home, they give me all the nice food imaginable and I put on a stone. Anyway, back to Johnny Aberdeen. That's almost everything for this week. Thank you as always for tuning in. This week in the syllabub, I want to know what some of your answers would be to those questions. In particular, I want to know what's different from childhood now compared to childhood when we were kids. As always, keep your book recommendations and silly questions coming in, put all your comments, ramblings and musings in the syllabub. This was of course a tag video and I tag Madzers aka Maddie McGowan, Ooh Gary C aka Gary C and it's way past my bedtime aka Carrie Hope Fletcher. This week's silly question once again comes from Carrie Pointer and she asked if you could make anything waterproof what would it be? 
I would make mobile phones waterproof, because A, I'm always terrified I'm going to drop it in a puddle one day, and B, imagine being able to phone your friends from under the sea. Next week, I'll have that haircut, I promise. Singing man, I shall kill you with my voice. Smelly man, feel the power of my armpit. Of course, smelly man can be defeated by deodorant man. Take that!